Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I didn't really cover it. Uh, I did. We talked about it on Friday, but I didn't go into it with a full news video. But uh, about a week ago, they announced that Miles Morales would be replaying the Clone Saga, an all new, all different, but also kind of the same, but not really. We want our nostalgia bucks, but you know, but trust me, it's new and creative this time. Sorry, that sounds very cynical, but that's how these press releases often read. Um, Miles Morales Spider-Man will be doing the Clone Saga. And the Clone Saga is this, this infam, infamous, this is probably the best way to put it, uh, moment from uh, 90s nostalgia where uh, the, uh, the, you know, Ben Riley uh, came onto the scene and uh, you had vests and you had a lot of pieces. What's funny is you'll get somebody coming in with the, the semi-hot take of, uh, oh, I love the Clone Saga. Uh, but, but, you know, people, the, the sales and the impact of the Clone Saga speaks otherwise. And <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not one of those uh, happy moments that I think a lot of people uh, like to comment on. But this isn't about the Clone Saga. This is about another infamous uh, 90s uh, event that sold well, but was, was damaging. And that was Heroes Reborn. So uh, Heroes Reborn is coming back. Uh, whatever happened to Earth's Mightiest Heroes 2021 um, the, in 1996? Basically, Marvel did this thing where they were uh, you know, out of ideas with uh, the Avengers and the, the, the titles that were not X-Men. And they basically, in a huge fight with Onslaught, uh, they died and they separated the universes. You had X-Men and kind of some various characters in one. Spider-Man was over there. And then in the other Marvel Universe, you had a, a kind of parallel world where the Avengers and Iron Man and Fantastic Four and all that kind of stuff uh, all went down. And uh, this was uh, Jeff Loeb, uh, who led this revamp along with Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, who had come back to the company just a couple years after they left it for Image to give us kind of their creative freedom take on the, the biggest, mightiest heroes. Um, now, definitely, this was a, uh, a big selling uh, event. Uh, it, it, it was the return of a lot of the image favorites, you know, Jim Lee, you know, coming on and, and doing, uh, I think, Fantastic Four at the time, Rob Liefeld uh, doing the Avengers. Um, you, you, had, you had big, big names coming over here. Uh, Captain America, Iron Man, Weiss Potashio was over there. You had, um, you had some big stuff. Um, the sales didn't hold up over time, and it's reminding me I should do a I should do a sales video for Heroes Are Born. Why not? And um, it also started to get plagued with delays and substitutions and kind of all the things that you kind of expected when you you said Jim Lee's going to be on a monthly book. Um, now, what's unclear is how long Heroes Are Born was originally meant to go. There's a bunch of different stories, and what's funny is people come saying they have the right answer that was always intended to be a year, but then you go over to this other place and, and you see that it was kind of indefinite, that it was going to go longer. Um, Rob Liefeld's weighed in on his podcast around this entire era, and it's very illuminating. Um, and I think he's he's telling you accurate information, but again, he's telling you from his perspective what he wanted to have happen. And there were certainly some other voices in the mix uh, also kind of pushing for their things. But relatively shortly thereafter, we had Heroes Return, which brought us a Kurt Busiak, George Perez Avengers as they they brought, uh, they, they, they stopped with this Heroes Reborn stuff, which was revealed to be this kind of parallel universe that Franklin Richards had created uh, and, uh, you know, and, and brought everything back. So anyway, it was, it was an odd time, but Marvel is saying we're getting it back. Uh, it's, it's coming back at some point in 2021 heroes were born. And this is, this is following up with a number of announcements that sound like we're getting a, a, just a, a nostalgia trip to the nineties, which worries me a bit because it feels a little bit like Marvel is hearing fans say, um, man, we like the nineties. We, we, we miss the nineties. We think, uh, uh, we, we, you know, comics were better back then. And so they're like, well, we'll show you. And, and so in 2021, it's like, let's do all the nineties things. I expect that, uh, I keep expecting there's going to be some Jonathan Hickman onslaught announcement and, uh, the Punisher is going to be turned into a, uh, an angel fighting character. Probably not the Punisher, but I, I just keep expecting more of this stuff is, is coming. Um, it is, uh, it is, it's tough. Um, we're at the 25 year anniversary or 25 or 35, maybe 35. 
no, no, 25. What am I talking about? I can't add. 25 year anniversary of Heroes Are Born. There's an omnibus coming out that they're going to try and sell. Um, it, uh, it, it, it definitely is a series. It was one that was kind of plodding along. And then uh, it gave us the Enchantress of super long legs uh, and that kind of infamous Captain America promo art that uh, seems to haunt Rob Liefeld 25 years later. Um, it is, uh, but but at the end, it, it just kind of, they kind of rushed to this conclusion because the, the wheels were falling off the bus and then and then here we are. Um, so it, it, like I said, it, it feels like we're into a year of trying to cash in on all the nostalgia we can do, telling the fans, no, see, look, you're getting your 90s. Here's your 90s. Here's your clone saga. Here's your Heroes Are Born. What do you think about it now, punk? Uh, that, that feels a little bit like, like what's happening here. I don't expect any of this stuff to stick. It all feels like one of those kind of brief events. Does anybody remember that uh, back just two years ago, we had something called Infinity Warps, where characters were merged together, and you got uh, you know a mashup of heroes. And uh, Marvel printed a ton of new number one comics around the Infinity Warps concept. Do you remember that? That was that was in uh, that was in two thousand nineteen. Do, do you, you you remember Infinity Warps? Because because uh, that was less than two years ago. Um, th this is kind of how it feels, and and I you know you're gonna probably people listening to this are, are re hearing a lot of cynicism in what I'm saying here, but the reality is we we have gotten, we're, we're accelerating faster and faster and faster into throwing these things out and then discarding them. And I have no reason to believe that Heroes Were Born and even the Clone Saga, these other things are are similar. It's the equivalent of rebooting a title with a number one issue. We're, we're throwing an old nostalgia bait uh, theme back into the mix. We're saying, uh, chew on this for a while and then uh, on to the next one. And, and the problem is some of that stuff in the past is gold and you can go back and mine it and get some good stuff out of it. Uh, but if you're, if you're using it for one, two month event stunts, you know, uh, like, is there any storyline involving the infinity gems that anyone will care about at this point? Um, it's going to be a lot harder. But all things considered, you know, just for kicks, I throw up here on the screen. This is Heroes Were Born from 96 through 97. This is how the sales did. I'll do a full analysis, kind of walking through what's going on here and some takeaways. Keep in mind, this was the mid-90s. Uh, you had more distribution. You had superstar artists coming in. So it is interesting to note, for all the crap that we've given Heroes Were Born, uh, being a kind of a convoluted mess of a storyline, and it was, um, every single issue from Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Avengers, Captain America, all of them, all sold over 100,000 copies, which is a little bit of indication both of the drawing power of uh, Jim Lee and, and Rob Liefeld, but also just how comics were were handled and treated back then. It was a it was a different world and definitely a, a stronger world. Um, th these kinds of sale numbers are not coming this time, unless, of course, uh, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld are coming in to draw all these things. And uh, one more takeaway, and I mean this as zero shade to Rob Liefeld, it is interesting to see that the two Jim Lee headed projects, uh, Fantastic Four, which he was, of course, on, then Iron Man, which he he had more influence over, Weiss Patacio was on that. Um, those were the top selling ones. It's nice to see Fantastic Four just always remained on top. Um, from the first issue sale to everything else. But also, you know, hey, it's the 90s, and look at this, you got the first issue drop. Um, a lot of people who who believe that the first issue of Heroes Were Born would be a big collector's item, but really weren't as interested going forward. Still, you know, uh, Fantastic Four, when was the last time that title just always averaged over 100,000 copies? Um, pretty crazy. I mean, the, the low point for Fantastic Four is 130,000. That's just... Uh, Happy days. Hopefully they're here again someday. Anyway, uh, Heroes Were Born returning to the Marvel Universe. Are you in for it? Are you excited? Is that 90s nostalgia bait something that you're uh, all about? Or do you kind of wish they would just move on and uh, deliver us some new things? What, what do you want, Fickle Fan? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. You can check the description of this video for all that links to where to, to, to find me in all kinds of different places. So come seek me out. And thanks for listening.